A lot of the artwork that I display is framed in a box and it starts um, just like this with a, a birch box. I take a frame, always store box. It's the only thing I don't make is the frame. It all starts with me picking a frame. Um, it's, people think I start with the idea, but I don't. I go by a frame and then I make a box and then I sit and think, what do I want to put in the box? What, what could I fit in there? What could look good? Does it go this way? Do I go this way? Um, and then from there, I begin to make the platform or the sled that the piece goes into. And then it, you know, and then that kind of houses the piece. So and then from there, I take the, the box and I'll wrap it with leather typically. Faux leather. I don't want to piss off anybody. <laughs> yeah, I use faux leather and I wrap the box and that's just so it looks nice and you know it doesn't harm your wall. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like how they all come together to create the final presentation. First and foremost is layering. Everything's done with layers. And the, the, I think to get good successful weathering, realistic weathering, uh, it's all done through layering. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the the I guess you'd call debris or gashes and scrapes and stuff. I do with just my tools. Some of it happens as I'm working, but sometimes if I need it to be kind of really beat up, I'll just take the back end of a tool and just kind of knock it around and um, you know go from there by making little divots and details. Then when I go to put paint on it, those are picked up, you know, and that collects it and that kind of helps develop a story or a narrative for it. I really currently just do the urban environments just because that's kind of what I've fallen in love with and I guess that's kind of what's gotten me noticed so I want to you know continue to kind of grow that but I, I would definitely love to branch out to like fantasy um, and do more like uh, Lord of the Rings or kind of like hobbit houses that kind of thing you know something you'd find in your mom's garden maybe you know something like that i think that all the time but you know i i love that when i can tell it's a model from from screen you know and sometimes i'm wrong but if i can point out like oh that's a practical model i then kind of my ears perk up you know, and then I'm looking at it and kind of studying it more than if I knew it was just some CGI thing. Because I, I can appreciate somebody created that on the computer, but that's it. There's nothing for me to explore. But, you know, a uh, Star Wars ship or something, as we all know, there's a lot to see on there being a real model. So I guess I, I'd have to say I notice it and I, I definitely like when I notice it. Yeah, I recently discovered um, Weta Workshop. You guys have heard of them? Or sure. Yeah. Of Rings. Yeah, yeah. So there's an Australian TV show called like Thunderbirds Ago, which I think it's an old show, but now they have a new like current version. And it looks like it's all CGI'd. And all the characters are CGI'd, but all the sets are all what they call bigatures. So they're mi miniature models, but they're the size of like this table or a station wagon. The first time I saw it, I did not believe that it, they were practical little effects. So I'd have to say anything from Weta Workshop, um, but the, the sets from the Thundercats are go, are crazy. I can't believe they're miniatures. And Independence Day. That was a big one for the me. White House. The White House. The White House blew my mind. I still to this day watch YouTube videos of them having that big White House out in that parking lot area with all of them standing around blowing it up. I love it. That's a good one. Yeah, more and more I do. Um, I definitely hide a lot of things, personal references, tons. That's one of the, like for example, the meat market. It's Cole's Meat Market. That was the first piece I made in this shop. And my brother-in-law, his name is Michael Cole, I named it Cole's Meat Market because he built this table. And then a week later, I started making that piece. And as an homage to him, I put that in there. 
Um, so all sorts of little things. I love Jalisco's tacos. Hmm. So I named my uh, grocery store Taquiera over there Jalisco's, even though it doesn't look like Jalisco's, but it's a nod to my love of Jalisco's. Um, all sorts of little things like that. Um, a lot of people think I smoke cigarettes and I drink alcohol because all my subject matter and I don't do either of those. <laughs> so um, I have to seek out a lot of reference with like cigarette prices. You know, for example, this piece right here, cigarette prices are very expensive because this is supposed to be in New York City, Times Square, as opposed to, you know, the Taquiera Jalisco piece. They're a lot less because that's supposed to be in like Aurora, Chicago, not right in that area. So those details I, I use to kind of give messages, but I also use it to like hide little personal nods to things like... Um, uh, Obey, Shepherd Fairy, Graffiti. I, I do little stickers of his because I'm a big fan of his. and That's pretty much the only thing uh, I do as far as that. But, yeah. I'd have to say the Subway piece is my favorite, uh, which is a Subway newsstand that I made. And it was kind of like in a, a shadow, not a shadow box, but a shelf box with a frame. So it was cool because it was just like all my other pieces, but I was able to make it really deep because it didn't have to sit on a wall. It was able to sit on the shelf. Um, so you could really look down in there and, and see the depth. So I'd have to say that is my favorite piece. And now the, the new newsstand is my favorite piece. I'm falling in love with newsstand. It is. It's getting easier, though. Um, the the subway newsstand was the hardest one to let go, just because I wasn't thinking it was going to go and sell off right away. So I kind of said goodbye, see you soon, and then it sold, and I never saw it again. So, I mean, it's getting easier. Uh, pretty much when I'm done making it, I've looked at it for so long that I'm kind of sick of seeing it, and it kind of goes off to the side and until it sells or goes to where it needs to go. So I don't really feel bad. For me, yeah, I'm making it. it. It's definitely a personal thing that turned into other people wanting them. And that's how it became me selling them. But up until that point, it was just creating it out of the fact that I wanted to see it. You know, I wanted, I love these little, grimy back alleyway places or you know bodegas and whatnot and i'd love to have one hanging on my wall and i didn't see anyone making it so i started making them um but i don't really have it's kind of hard to focus on a market per se with these um, i have a lot of people that i would never guess would be collectors of mine like um people who are like executives or, you know, uh, banking people, you know, who I wouldn't expect to have, you know, a meat market on their wall in their office and they do. So I just really focus on making something that I'd want to see. And then uh, whoever likes it is who I made it for, essentially. Yeah, I have a lot of people that um, used to live in kind of urban environments or places where you would uh you know see my type of work and they you know they miss it and the, this is a way they can kind of have it as a piece of decor in their home so i guess i'd have to say that and then um just anybody who who appreciates the kind of grungy urban you know look of the city but they don't necessarily live in the city those types i guess so it's all over the place a lot of different people I've thought about that. Um, that's funny. Yeah, I um, no no sense. I I go for the eyes, and I've even thought about noise. I thought, how could it be? You know, I did a scene once where it was like a crime scene with caution tape, and I thought, how could it be if you heard a little siren in the background? But ideas for the future. I haven't done anything with that. I certainly haven't done anything with the sense, but it, I could. It could be done. You never know. You never know. Right now, I'm working on a piece for a group show um, in Germany. And this is just uh, kind of like the typical New York City uh, doorway. You know, you kind of 
always count on them being graffitied and ratty and nasty. And it, it this is a process uh, point, and it, it's not done, nowhere near done. But um, this is kind of this is one of the smaller framed pieces I've made so far. So it's kind of a step into a new direction of making intricate but smaller size pieces. Okay, so I just finished this up though. This Before I started on this, I, uh, I've been working the last month and a half on this newsstand. Um, it's, uh, it's not in a frame, so it's one of those pieces that you can see from all sides. So these obviously take a lot longer. But uh, for the past month and a half, I've been working on this and uh, coming out of this with only a, maybe another day or so left of work on it. Social media, Instagram, um, at what the hell is my handle. And uh, I post there more than anywhere. So I'm kind of addicted to it. So there, and uh, I've been asked about YouTube. I don't have a YouTube, but I'm thinking about trying to get one. Or, you know, I got to make a movie. But once I can figure out how to make videos and get them on YouTube, I'd like to explore that. But other than Instagram, you can check out my website at ryanthomasmonahan.com. So plugged in. We got it. <laughs> nice. We did it twice. You better get overtime for this, guys. Oh, no, it didn't record. That's no. <laughs>